Hello, and welcome back to Grumpy Gnome Gaming. Uh, this is going to be episode two in our Let's Play of Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. And in this episode, we have just left Candlekeep, and we find ourselves on the path in the um, Coast Way. Now, we have just been ambushed, and we lost Gorion, but as you are soon going to discover, we're going to be joined by one of our old friends. So without further ado, let's uh, get into the episode. Hey, uh, it's me, Emowyn. Oh, joy, Emowyn. Okay, sorry I followed you. Never get out of candle keep. The monks are such a bore, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I've got two possible answers here for her. I can either say, how could I have known? Gorion didn't tell me. Or... Um, I don't want you over my shoulder, which is not what I'm going to do because all of a sudden I am in the open world by myself and I could really use as much assistance as um, possible. So I'm going to take my little friend with me. She shouldn't be out by herself anyway. So click there. I accidentally read the letter on his desk. Of course you did because that's just your way. And now we have Emmaline in our group. So... Let's go ahead and do a pause and take a look at what Emmeline brings with her. And we'll find out that she has three potions of healing. She has a potion of speed and a wand of magic missiles. So what I'm going to do is we're going to even out the potions of healing. Whoops. Just like that. Uh, she can have the wand and she can have the oil. Uh, she does come with a short bow and 40 arrows, and um, she will be our stand-in-the-back archer for a while. Uh, taking a look at some of her statistics, she is a first-level thief, and uh, proficiencies include short sword and short bow. And her ability scores, she is not the, uh, the strengthiest in our group, so she's obviously going to be in the back. Uh, dexterity, she is maxed out, and that is wonderful because that actually gives her an extra proficiency for her short bow. Her constitution, that is actually the maximum for any non-fighting class, so that is great. We're going to take it. Her intelligence is one point under her maximum that she could get as a human, and actually, that is high enough for her to dual class into a mage. And um, a little spoiler, uh, we will be doing that with her come around 6th level. So wisdom is not critical for her. And she is rather charismatic with a um, score of a 16. So yeah, we're going to keep her around. She is neutral good. And she is actually going to become our tax collector. And when it comes to visiting towns, uh, she'll be the one going in and knocking on the doors and um, asking for donations. And so she's going to be a, a big help. First thing I'm going to do with her also, customize her script. Uh, we're going to go back to the ranged because she does have a bow. We're going to go ahead and click done with her. And she is done. And as long as we're on this page, I want to jump back to myself. I want to go ahead and customize my script back to ranged. And we're done with that. So let's go ahead and move on. And I'll tell you a little bit about uh, what my playthrough style is going to be. And this is um, either compared to others or contrasting others. So if we click the area map, we do see that this was our ambush site up here. However, Gorion broke rule number one of Zombieland, oh, I'm sorry, of Baldur's Gate, and that is always stay on the path. Um, he did wander off the path, and unfortunately, he did pay with his life, and we got lucky that we were able to get away. So we're going to go ahead, yes. and we're going to stay on the path there for yes. a while and find out what kind of wisdom we can pick up along the way. Hello there. Paul said, well, busy day for me indeed. Strange noises through the night. Now a plethora of people strolling about in the woods. Anyway, 
we've got a number of uh, responses that we can have for Colslet here. Stand away from me. No, that's not like me. I uh, uh, could you help me, my foster? This is a possibility, but I really like number three because um, I am a cavalier and I do look out for my party and its uh, best interest. I would have your assistance. Um, I was ambushed last night and require whatever you can give. Uh, Cole said replies, I have little, little to give besides advice and goodwill, my friend. But make friends where you can. So, I, let's see. Um, also here he reminds us to take like-minded companions. Um, you'll notice that so far we do have a good group but that uh, may not always be the case. Anyway, uh, although he was unable to give me much assistance, I am still going to uh, thank him for his time, and he gives me a friendly farewell. So that was pleasant. So here we go, continuing along on the path. Let's go ahead and talk about how we plan to play out this game. Uh, there's two ways that we can go. We can use the storyline quest, or we can go ahead and use the uh, speed run. Now, the storyline quest, which is the one that I prefer doing, is actually visiting all the side quests, visiting all the lands, and it's more about the journey than the destination. On the other hand, you do have players on YouTube that like to do speed runs, and where they'll take a solo player, uh, they'll set the uh, difficulty setting to hell, and they'll just run through it with the intention of seeing how quickly they can finish the game. Uh, that is not going to be this run because um, I will be running with a full party and I want to show you guys as much of the land in Baldur's Gate as possible. So we will literally visit every land in the game and we will do every side quest in the game. So. We got a couple characters up here. Uh, stand by Again? for this response. So yes. hold on. Montoron, you are so aggravating. She's disturbing to my demeanor. All right, this is Czar. Uh, Czar is is a nutcase, but surprisingly enough, he is not the most he is not the most annoying character in the game. Uh, we are yet to meet that character, and unfortunately, like I said, that character will become a permanent member in our party. But, as long as we're talking with these two, let's go ahead and continue the dialogue. So, hold, uh, Monteron, this young wayfarer needs some help. Okay, so far, we're on good terms. Eyes are, looks like they've been roughed up quite a bit. Uh, indeed, I can offer healing potions if you wish a token of goodwill. Okay, so, once again, here comes that word, assistance, and sure enough, I will gladly take it. Nothing to fear with these simple potions, not even hold you to debt. Your conscience knows otherwise. Okay, so the party gained a heal and a potion, so so far they've shown nothing but goodwill to us, so we have no reason to suspect anything other than that. Uh, perhaps as payment, you would go with us to Nashkel. Okay, that sounds fair, but um, we were instructed to first go to the Friendly Arm Inn and visit uh, a couple friends up there, Khalid and Jahira. So, uh, your conscience be your guide. Uh, there's little else for me to do. I might as well go with you, go on your way. I would join you, but I must meet some people first. That is the truth. Well, precious time, it's best uh, to travel a companion. So this is where we actually join them, or they're going to join us in the group. And a quick take a look at who these guys are. Uh, we'll click there. We'll go down to Monteron. And Monteron is a multi-class. He is a first-level fighter and a first-level thief. Uh, his stats are nothing too exciting. Nice strength for a halfling, and obviously a very good dexterity, although he could have gone uh, much higher than that. Not much higher. I think a, a halfling can actually max out at a 19, but 17 is decent. 
so anyway, this is Montaran. And uh, the one thing that um, you may notice on here is that he is neutral evil. So although he has shown us nothing but uh, compassion, uh, this guy may have some intentions that are other than desirable. And Zar. Zar is a first level necromancer, which means he loves to play with dead people. His stats are also nothing too impressive, although his intelligence does uh, qualify him to be a mage. Um, he is of chaotic evil alignment, which means that you mix that in with his being a nutcase, and he might actually bring us into a situation that is going to be less than desirable. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change his script as long as I'm on this page. Um, we don't want him to be anything other than ranged because we want to keep him out of combat. And for Montaron, I am also going to switch him to ranged. And he does not have any ranged weapons at this time, but he will. So I'm going to move him up into the second position because he is a fighter and a thief. So our marching order is going to be myself, our protagonist in the front. Um, Montaran is going to be the second. Uh, Emowyn is third. And then Zar is going to take up the, uh, he's the caboose. So now that we got our group together, let's take one more look at the land. And we're going to venture into the ambush site because I don't want to spend any more time here than I have to. And the reason for that is uh, the way I play the game is I like to gather my party together first. So before I even go out looking for experience points, I want to get a full party. Once I get my full party, my next objective is to get the weapons that I would like my party members to have and uh, then I'm going to concern myself with going after experience points. So, we're going to stop this, get Something him with out my of time. there, and boom, we made, we made quick, uh, quick death of that. Let's go back here, click up here, go there, and click that. Oops, we want to ah, get the whole party up with there. Caution. So, what we're basically going to do is check our ambush site. We're going to pick up any items that may have fallen to the ground. And then we're just going to continue uh, directly to the friendly armor. Okay. Now, this is where this little red diamond comes in handy. Because as I told you, this will reveal all items that are grounded. And when I click on this, you can see that there's actually quite a quite a few items. So the first thing I'm going to start doing is picking up anything of value. So we have a magic uh, girdle. We have a note. Gold is always welcome. We got some kind of a gem here. It looks like a pearl. And I'm going to go ahead and take these weapons because they might be worth something. Armor is very heavy and leather doesn't bring in much and daggers are only worth one point or I'm sorry one gold. I'd be so I'm much gonna... preferring the cover of night for this blasted daylight. Yeah, they're already complaining. So I'm not going to concern myself with the low dollar items here. Um, my main concern is just whatever we can carry that's going to bring us a, a decent return. So we're done here. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and get out of here. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do with Garion's body. It is actually going to remain there for the entire game. One thing that might be worth looking at, and uh, that would be the scroll that Brian dropped. And let's see who actually picked it. There it is. So here we go. Uh, my friend Brian, please forgive the abruptness, uh, which I now write this, but time is short and there will be uh, much done. I'm not going to go ahead and read this whole thing because it, uh, I really want to get on with the adventure. So I'm just going to scroll down very slowly. You can read it at your will. 
If I'm scrolling too quickly, feel free to pause it. But this basically tells us that uh, we need to get going. There are friends waiting for us at the Friendly Arm Inn, and it is signed E. And we're actually going to meet E here in about 30 seconds. So here we go. Let's head back to the path. Okay, wolves can be difficult, especially at this level, because we're not really equipped for them. Uh, one thing I am going to do, even though if you took the time to uh, read my uh, race and class descriptions, the halflings do get a plus one with a sling. However, I do not have a sling, but one thing I can give to Monteron is a short bow, and Emmeline can actually split her arrows so let's go ahead and give him 10 arrows for now and then that way we can keep him out of hand-to-hand -hand combat and uh, it's always better to take out your enemies from a distance than it is to engage them in straight combat and so for myself let's, uh, what is the plan i'm going to use my throwing axes Montaron is going to use his bow. Huh, Emelyn is going to use her bow. Zar, unfortunately, all he has is a dagger, but I am not going to allow him to get into combat. Yes. We're going to target this. We click play. And Zar, get out of there. Oh, no. I don't feel so good. And that's exactly why I wanted to keep him out of combat. And before he gets too close, I am going to switch to Again. my melee weapon. And Monteron is going to switch to his good. melee weapon. And Emmeline is going to take yep. three steps back. I'm gone. Zar still wants to get in there with the Something wolf. Let's just back him up a little bit further. And the wolf is down. <sighs> hmm. He'll gain this back when he casts the spell. Uh, because Zar's spell is a uh, Larlick's Minor Drain. And what this spell does is, is the target that he casts it to suffers four damage. And he's going to gain four hit points. So as soon as he casts this, he's actually going to gain his hit points back, and there is going to be an encounter where he will have an opportunity to cast that. So we're going to hold off on that for now. In the meantime, he has to uh, limp along with us. With caution. So let's get going. All right, we're back on the trail again, and there it is. Emelyn just uh, told us that she noticed something in this tree, and uh, she wants to go check it out. I care not. So, yeah, she cares not, but she really does care because she is into this way. She likes gems and jewelry just about as much as a gnome does. What is the plan? And yes, since I am the grumpy gnome, I know what that feels like. So. Let's get out of here and continue on the coast way. Oh, thou wonder. Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. And this is Mr. E, better known as Elminster in the Forgotten Realms. He is a god level magic user and uh, a very wise man. Uh, one thing that we don't know yet is that he's actually been watching us for a long time, and uh, he is going to look over us during our journeys. So even though he comes across as being kind of deranged, I am still going to use a friendly uh, response with him. I am desperate. Do you know where the friendly arm in is? I was told to meet some friends, so we're still keeping honest with him. And he tells us it's a short distance to the north and the doors are always open. And see, he already knows what our journey is. With caution. 
he wrote that note that we found on Goriah. We're going to take a spin up here because Emma one thought that she saw something. And she actually saw something in that little hall huh, there. You're a queer fellow. Oh, I love it when she says that. I've done had enough of this. Yeah, so have I, so shut up. So there she found a ring. Once again, you'll notice the blue hue around there indicates that it is a magic ring. If I did not know what this was, I would not equip myself with it. However, since I do know that this is a ring of protection, I am simply going to um, take it. We're going to give it to our main character. And he is going to put it on. His armor class is four. Now it goes down to a three. So also let's um, go ahead and distribute some of these potions. We're doing good with weapons. And a lot of this game is also going to be resource or inventory management. But so far we're doing pretty good. I'm not really concerned. We're going to offload a bunch of this at the friendly arm. Yes, yes. But let's get up there. Let's get the rest of our party. And uh, then we'll go ahead and journey onward and uh, start our quests. Okay, this is the screen cut that takes us into the Friendly Arm Inn. Uh, this one is not really as elegant as the one from the original edition. However, you know, it works. Okay, we now stand at the, uh, at the drawbridge of the Friendly Arm Inn. However, there is one item Again? I want to run yes. over here and pick up. I don't know how Emmeline can spot the, uh, jewelry glittering in the night. But she did notice that there is something under this tree. So what you her want? being her. I'm gone. She's got it. Another ring. This is probably one of the best rings in the game. This is the Ever Memory ring, which basically doubles all first level spells for the uh, magic users. Ah. And I am not going to give it to Czar because he is not going to be with us for long. But um, we will be getting a full-time mage uh, probably around ed episode four or five. And that mage will definitely take the ring and make good use of it. You know, come to think of it, maybe I will give it to Czar. Because we've got two people who are injured. Although Czar's going to reheal, uh, Montaron will not. And it might be good to load up on some spells and sleep here. So let's do a little bit of... Uh, let's stop here for one second. Let's pause the game. I'm going to yep. Emmeline. Do you have it still? Yes, you do. Let's give it to Czar. There's Czar. He has it. We'll take a look at his spells real quickly. And you'll see that right now he has two Larlux Minor Drains. Uh, he has two spells in his book, Larlux Minor Drain and Chill Touch. Uh, since I do not plan to get the mage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, we will not be using Chill Touch. However... With the ring that we have just uh, been given, we can equip ourselves with it, take another look, and voila! We now have double the capacity for the um, spells. So I'm going to go ahead and throw two more of those in. And once we sleep overnight, that will restore all our spells. Now, at the top of the stairs is an assassin. He is a mage, and he has a bounty out for us. So what I'm doing I'm right now is I am preparing the party what is the plan? for this encounter. Think carefully. And you really need to plan this out carefully, because if he gets the advantage on you, uh, he can actually kill our party. Uh, we need to act quick. We need to get rid of him. And I'm actually going to act out before he even begins his dialogue. 
So let's go ahead and do a quick save. Quick save is your best friend in this game. We're going to move up to here, which is going to reveal him. Hi, friend. I pause the game. I'm going to yes. equip all of my characters with their ranged weapons. I care not. And Monteron is actually going to uh, be casting a spell. So now that we've done that, Again? since I've left the whole party, I am going to force attack on this person who's Tarnish. I believe that's his name. There it is. So we're going to force attack on him. Monteron is going is to cast Lilux Miner on him. And let's watch this battle play out. And the rivers run red! Okay. Because of our aggressive nature, he turned hostile. He is still going to approach us, but uh, we may get the upper hand on him. Fingers crossed. And there's one hit. Uh, I have become the destroyer of worlds. Uh, yeah, Zar is really enjoying this one. He's going to go ahead and fire off another one even though he does not... Oh, yeah, actually, he could use the hit points. Good deal. Let's go. And he's down. Let's... Okay, see, this is something that you need to uh, look at. Because it appears... Do, 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 do. We did not receive the experience points for this. And that could be two things. Either it hasn't registered yet, or one of the guards in the friendly arm is the one who killed them. So, let's just see if it... Okay, there it is. We did get the experience points. If the guards that are in the friendly arm in kill him, then we will not get the experience point for that. But we did get it. All is well. Let's go ahead and move Think a little bit closer. Carefully. And we'll notice that this guy is pretty much packed to the gills with uh, scrolls. Let's uh, go ahead and have oh, Zara can pick him up. Me. Since everything here is magic user related. And we'll take a look and read the note that he had on him. A bounty notice. Be it known to all the evil intent, a bounty has been placed on the head of Carlo, the foster child of Dorian, last seen in the area of Candlekeep. This person is to be killed in quick order. Those returning with proof of the deed shall receive no less than 200 coins of gold. As always, any that reveal these plans to the forces of law shall join the target in their fate. So, right now, we have just discovered that we are worth 200 coins. Uh, quick spoiler, during the game, this number will go up as we gain uh, more notoriety. So, put that there. Anyway, journey onward. What is the plan? Well, our plan is to Think go in. carefully. Okay. We're going to be approached by somebody who's going to let us know that his uncle is, I think he's working somewhere down in the mines. Uh, we've got a character over here that's looking extremely shady. And we do need to engage conversation with him because he actually is one of the new characters in the Enhanced Edition. And there is a side quest uh, for him. And so we want to get that side quest, so we do need to yes. speak with him. Hey, friend. Hmm. It's about time. Bring me another flagon of ale. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. It doesn't work that way. So... I can either give him the, I think you've mistaken me for somebody else, or I can just flatly tell him I am not your servant, get your own ale. I think I'm going to still keep the uh, peaceful. Then why do you bother me? Be gone. Yeah, we don't want to cause any trouble, so we're out of here. Hey, friend. Good to meet a fine sod such as yourself. This is Joppy. I can't stand the way the roads are cut off these days. My uncle, Baldur's Gate, can't get down there. How come the roads are cut off? 
And uh, where have you been these past few months? Well, obviously, we've been locked in uh, candle keep for 20 years. The roads are crawling with brigands and bandits. And every scrap of iron uh, you've got. So surely you must have fled some trip. So now we know that the roads are loaded with brigands and bandits. And those are going to come into play later on in the story as well. I don't want to waste more time with him. So it's just, you know, I hope the roads clear up soon for your sake. And dialogue. Okay. Enter the inn. Emmeline, she's... Huh, you're a queer... This way. Yeah, you're a queer fella. Uh, she's extremely nosy. And... She just happens to know that there's a potion of healing right there. She is going to rejoin us. Yes? We are going to run With over caution. to this corner. And we are going to find Khalid. Oops. And a little mosh pit there. Uh, Khalid and Jahira. So let's uh, engage them in conversation. How long must we wait here? Things turn to the south as we sit. Yeah, that that's uh, pretty much Jahira's attitude. So good day, friend. You are the child of Dorian, are you not? I recognize you from his letters, for he writes of you often. Forgive my manners. I am Jahira, and this is Khalid my husband and uh, good 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 to know you Khalid does have a stuttering problem and needless to say that is not his only issue in the game uh, we are friends of your adopted father he is not with you I must assume the worst yes unfortunately uh, if he's passed we share your loss um, Gorion often said that he worries about your safety even at the expense of his own and he wishes that her and Khalid would become our guardians. So that is our indicator that these people are probably going to be staying with us for quite a while. However, you're much older now. The choice is yours. So basically, she's giving us the choice if we want to take her or not. Uh, we could travel with you until you get settled to find help and continue. Uh, I do believe here, she also mentions they need to go to Nash Scale. So now we've got Monteron and Czar and Khalid and Jahira all wanting to go to Nash Scale. So guess where we're going? Your company is welcome. Now, before we leave here, I am going to go ahead. Oh, no, no, don't do that. And that is an example of... AI going wild. So let's change their script right away. Nature servant awaits. Yes, it does. Script. Customize script. And we're going to give her range. She's done. Khalid, where are you? You're down at the bottom. Going to give you customize script. Give you ranged. Done done now Khalid as long as we're on his page he is a level one fighter and what else do we need to know his proficiencies he is proficient with the long sword he is also proficient with the axe and he has one uh, spot in longbow so as an elf he uh, will make an excellent archer he does have a relatively high dexterity, which will help him with his archer skills. His constitution is high enough that he is not squishy. And his strength is probably uh, par for a fighter. However, uh, he is extremely delicate. And I am not going to use him as a frontline tank. Uh, he will be converting into a, uh, an archer for the uh, purpose of our playthrough. Also, the best place for him right now would be in the uh, number three position. Jahira, she is a multi-class. She is a level one fighter and a level one druid. So her proficiencies are what the quarterstaff with the sling and she's got two pluses for the club. So obviously she is going to favor the club as her melee weapon 
and we will be getting her a sling for her ranged weapon. Her strength is par. Her dexterity is not where we would like it, but, you know, we can work with that. Her constitution is decent, so she's not very squishy. And her intelligence and wisdom are just fair, and she is rather charismatic. However, uh, she will not be our leader. So I think that looked at everybody. Let's go ahead and close that up. Let's go ahead and reform. So, Jahira, you are actually going to come up into the, let's put you number three. Let's put Khalid up at number two. Monteron, you are going to go to number four. Then we'll have Emowyn, and then we'll have Zar. Now, the last thing we're going to do in this episode is sell our things to Bentley over here. And we're going to get a room for the night where we will be able to get all of our spells back. And if we were down any hit points, we would be recovering those. But since we're not, all we're doing is getting the room for spell memorization. And this is also a good time to go through. This is a good time to go through and change any of the spells that we do have. If we would like to uh, move them on to something else. I think at this moment, I, mm, you know what, no, let's take out a tangle, let's put another cure wound in, uh, second level, she doesn't have any, who else has spells, Zar, Zar's going to get the four Larlux miners, no spells, no spells, I don't have any spells, so that's it, okay, let's get our whole party together, Again, let's speak with Mr. Think Bentley, think carefully, It's been dreadful slow business lately. The iron, uh, uh, iron is the lifeblood of this whole region, and it sure is painful when it gets scarce. So what do you have to sell? So we can get the rooms, but first we need to have some things we want to sell him. We are going to sell him, let's see, what did we pick up? We picked up a pearl. We picked up a long sword. And actually, I'm going to keep that long sword for Khalid. Nobody can use Morning Star, so we can get rid of that. So sell this. Now, Khalid, Jahira, Monteron, do you have anything? No. Zar, what do you have? We've got a bunch of spells. This is the letter. Uh, bounty, we don't need to keep that anymore. You're going to keep all of those. Wow, I think that's about it. And as long as we're on this page, let's go ahead and buy what we need. So, Zar, I am going to get you a sling, and I'm going to get you some bullets. Twelve is the magic number. Schoolhouse Rock, there he is. So, he's got twelve bullets, and he's got a sling. That's good. Emmeline, let's go ahead and get you some more arrows. I think one more stack ought to do you. No, no actually, you need a couple more. We'll get you a full roster of 12. Done. And buy those. Monteron, you are so aggravating. Let's get you some bullets since you're more proficient with a sling. Uh, 12 is the magic number. And get you your sling. Buy those. Oh, and you'll be able to sell your shorts. Jahira. We're going to get you a sling and get you some bullets. Twelve is the whoa, magic number. Buy those. Khalid. Now for Khalid, we are actually going to get you your arrows. And we are going to give him a longbow. Now notice there is a composite bow here. For substantially more and the composite bow is a better bow because this one actually gives you a plus one to hit armor class zero and a plus two to your damage factor it is a slow weapon however you must have an 18 strength to wield a composite bow unfortunately Khalid is not there 
The best he can do is a longbow. The longbow still gives you a plus one to hit armor class zero, but there is no damage modifier, and this only requires a six strength. So the best Talib can do is the longbow, and he is ready to go. So that is everybody. Let's go ahead and make sure everybody is fully equipped. So arrows, 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 potion, bow. Jahira has bullets, bullets, bullets. She has a sling, and we'll put her potion right there. Monteron has bullets, bullets, bullets. Oops, let's get rid of those arrows. Give those to Khalid and replace that with that. Now he's actually using a ranged weapon that he is proficient with because he is a halfling. Emoen, how do you look? Let's go ahead and max out your arrows. Let's go ahead and who was missing? I think Jahira was missing a potion. And you can keep the gem. Jahira has her potion. We're all equipped. Let's talk to Bentley one more time. My inn is open to all who behave themselves. That's nice to know. What do you have to sell? We're going to take a peasant room. We're going to rent it. Okay, we're done, and now let's go to the end of this episode. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Yes, you must. Yes. So, let's use this. Makes pathfinding easy. Everybody gather right there. I'd like to take this moment to thank you guys for watching episode two of our Baldur's Gate walkthrough. Uh, in the next episode, we're actually going to go from the Friendly Arm Inn down to Nashkel. Uh, we will be picking up our fifth character, and we're going to be losing two down there. Uh, Nashkel, as you can tell, is toward the southern end of the map. Uh, we still need to go ahead and clear this region right here. And uh, I'm going to show you a little trick on how we can get through here and minimize the encounters. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, jump down to here. We'll hit travel, and then that's going to take us into an auto save, and that's going to be a good place to end the video. So. If you were with me the whole time, thank you very much for coming on this adventure with us. Uh, if you liked it, please leave a like. Um, if you really enjoyed it, please go ahead and sub if you'd like to see some more. And be sure to share this with your friends because I can really use uh, the support on this channel. Um, I am the Grumpy Gnome. Uh, thank you very much, and we'll see you in the next one.